Trump. Yes. You've done very well in this campaign so far by promising to build a wall and make another country pay for it. Right. Send 11 million people out of the country. Cut taxes $10 trillion without increasing the deficit. Right. And make Americans better off because your greatness would replace the stupidity and incompetence of others. That's right. Let's be honest. <laughs> Is this a comic book version of a presidential no, campaign? It's not a comic book. And it's not a very nicely asked question the way you say that. In one cozy email to Podesta, CNBC's John Harwood slammed an interview that NBC's Chuck Todd did with Clinton. Harwood calling it amazing that some people still think it's worth burning so much interview time with person most likely to be next president on her emails. Uh, here's a guy named John Harwood. Do you know him, John Harwood? So that's John Harwood, right? He's got the blue check, so you know he's important. And uh, if you read the Podesta emails, what a goddamn sycophant this guy is. What a ass kisser to power. Oh, apologizing for being critical of the Clinton campaign over and over to John Podesta. Anyway, uh, honest to God, I was joking, he said. this is Anyway, you got to read those emails. I should do a whole thing on that. I was joking. I wasn't really being critical. So he decides to put up a poll because so now he's a bad journalist with psychological problems because he's a propaganda spewer for power and he's doing the opposite of what his job is. And uh, so he's doing the Russia thing and the whole thing. So he puts he puts on his own goddamn Twitter feed. He puts up a survey to ask his own goddamn followers. Who do you trust? <clears throat> he says, who do you trust? WikiLeaks? Or the U.S. Intel officials. Do you see what the Do you see what the result was? The result was eighty three percent of his own goddamn followers on Twitter trust WikiLeaks more than the United States U.S. intelligence agencies. Do you think that's what he thought was going to happen when he put that up? And to his credit, he didn't take it down because he knew it would look even worse if he took it down. So it's not gutsy that he's leaving it up. He's leaving it up because he knows it will look even stupider. <laughs> what a moron. This is your goddamn... Dude, he's, a, he's your senior d dude. He's your, he's your senior journalist dude. <sighs> what a waste. I, I just, so I... Uh, John Harwood... A tool extraordinaire. And then he asked his own goddamn Twitter followers and they stick it right in his ear. <laughs> Mitt Romney, like Nancy Pelosi for that matter, is a person of deep faith. By everything an outsider can see, President Trump is not a person of faith. He transacts political business with people of faith. He does not uh, show any indication that he even recognizes abstract principles like the difference between right and wrong or morality mm. or values. He is concerned about Donald Trump. And so in his remarks at the prayer breakfast while talking about stock market values and poll numbers, uh, he goes after uh, uh, Pelosi and Romney in this way and online, uh, he and his family are even more viciously going after uh, mm -hmm. Mitt Romney, casting uh, you know questions about his masculinity and uh, 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 portraying him as shady. All of these things uh, are they show Donald Trump for who he is. He called he calls Romney sanctimonious. The reason Donald Trump thinks people are sanctimonious is because the the moral considerations that go into their decisions, he. He doesn't understand those. He does, that doesn't compute with him. And finally, on the issue of impeachment, I do believe that Democrats, uh, Democratic leaders understand that that's where this is headed. But they don't want to appear too eager for it. That's why they say, wait for Mueller. Mueller uh, seems to be accelerating the pace of actions in his investigation. So that's actually happening. Uh, but I don't think the uh, fervor for impeachment within the Democratic Party is going to be stoppable by Democratic leaders. I talked to Tom Davis, a former head of the House Republican Campaign Committee. He says he thinks some Republicans will likely eventually join with Democrats in that front and that it's not impossible, given what Mueller uh, uh, finds and how political circumstances deteriorate, 
that uh, it's not out of the question that a uh, Senate could convict on impeachment mm. charges. That's a heavy uh, uphill task. It yeah. takes 20 Republican senators, but uh, we're going to have to see what Mueller lays down. Sure. Look, this was a very disturbing uh, tableau for the country. Um, it was dark because he's made clear that his mind is dark. This is somebody in deep psychological distress right now, self-pitying, insecure, angry. He doesn't recognize abstract concepts like right and wrong, like morality or immorality, like true or false. We're talking about the president now who doesn't know what he's doing, who is not honest, and who cares about no one else other than himself. If you look at the uh, results in the United States as compared to other countries, which also had a terrible problem, but then have crushed the virus. There's no other conclusion you can reach, but that the incompetence of the Trump White House has lit the country on fire. And what the president is doing is retweeting a game show host saying the CDC is lying. Wolf, let's be honest, the president in the middle of a deadly pandemic with 4 million cases, over 150,000 uh, Americans dead, is functioning at the level of a child and not even a child who's really connected to reality. Now, if, if you talk to economists who serve presidents of both parties, they will tell you that Peter Navarro himself is a crackpot in his own field of economics. A couple things about that, Allison. First of all, Mary Trump said in her book recently, that is the president's niece, that the president is a child trapped in an adult's body. Um, that the level of reasoning and uh, uh, explanation displayed by the president is consistent with that. So was yesterday his complaint that nobody likes me. Second of all, step back for a minute. We know that before uh, Donald Trump was a political candidate, Russia was his financial, Russia and Russians were his financial benefactors. We know from Robert Mueller that Russia then helped the president's campaign. We know the president then welcomed that help. We know that since Donald Trump became president, he has consistently acted in ways that advance the strategic objective of Russia to weaken NATO and the Western alliance. This is partly a reflection of Donald Trump's particular uh, profile and values. That is to say, he uh, does not really care about anything beyond himself, and therefore he doesn't care about uh, the uh, uh, respect for institutions of government. And the record of the last 12 years is one of blowtorch blow opposition from Republicans to Democratic presidents. There are a couple things that are different this time. First of all, Joe Biden is a white man. Uh, Barack Obama's race uh, played a role in the intensity of the grassroots and the uh, uh, opposition in Washington to what he was trying to do, so that makes a difference. Kate, these are people who, if Donald Trump said, I'm going to trash you on Twitter unless you go smack your mom in the face, they would go smack their moms in the face. I, I would say it's the opposite of hobnobbing with the wealthy. And, and it shows the, the talent that uh, AOC has. She has a strong belief system. She's able to articulate that belief system. You know, we're now in this extended debate over the uh, Biden economic agenda. And Joe Manchin's out saying too big too fast, too many taxes, um, and how do progressives counter that? And with AOC, you see she uh, uses her star power to go into that venue, high-profile venue, and drive a very strong message that is now on the front page of newspapers, and we're talking about it on television. Of course, it was a political speech. We're in a midterm re-election year. Uh, the issues that he's talking about are inherently political. But I think it's also important to say that the core point he made in that political speech about a threat to democracy is true. Now, that's something that's not easy for us as journalists to say. We're brought up to believe there's two uh, different political parties with different uh, points of view, and we don't take sides in honest disagreements between them. But that's not what we're talking about. These are not honest disagreements. The Republican Party right now is led by a dishonest demagogue, Many, many Republicans are rallying behind his lies about the 2020 election and other things as well. And a significant portion or a uh, sufficient portion uh, of the constituency that they're leading attacked the Capitol on January 6th violently. <laughs>